So, you are the crafty type and want to know how to make this ant farm yourself? Or just enjoy watching our Formicarium build videos? Whichever might be the case, we've got you covered. Stay tuned. Hello and welcome to Ants Vienna everyone! If you are new to the channel, our intro should have given you a rough idea of what this channel is all about, namely ant keeping. And if you are one of our new or long term subscribers wishing for another how to build an ant farm or time lapse video, I am glad to announce that you won't have to wait any longer. Before we go through the building process of these two beauties, let me thank you for the trust and support of this channel. We're now way past 1000 subscribers and keep growing fast. So expect the 1000 sub special to drop next week and feel free to participate in our volcano and farm giveaway to win this handmade creation for yourself. Entry extended to May 15th. With all this being said, let's jump right into the action. Don't forget to smash that like button to let me and YouTube know that you like what I do and subscribe if you haven't already. Okay, like we always do in the building tutorials, we are going to start off by showing the materials. And the first one is this mold that we're going to use to give shape to our nest. More about it later. Next up will be our trusty spatula with which I'll be mixing the water and the plaster together. Now a box of your choice. Mine would be that of Greek yogurt because it tastes good and you can use the box as well for things like mixing. Let me adjust the camera here. This is some water distilled with no gas, of course. And the main material we'll be using is, of course, fine plaster casting powder. And look out for it to be a non-toxic one. This is very important so your ants don't die when you put them in the nest. And another little detail is that you should always put add powder to water first. Right? Not the other way around, cause the mixture ain't gonna get out good. Now a couple of things you don't get to see every day, because I'm wearing them, are this pair of glasses to protect my eyes from dust particles. And the other and last thing in the back is a 3M mask with dual filtering. It has two filters and both of them offer protection against particles and gases. Obviously particles when we are carving and gases is also a good thing because when you mix plaster powder with water there are a few fumes that you don't want to inhale. Let me get equipped. And here we are. Getting ready to mix. Again, starting with water
just add about as much water as the mold you want to create and start adding the powder. I'm using a scoop for this and letting it actually drizzle in slowly like this. Just doing more of it and since mixing plaster with water is a thing of experience and trial and error, we're upping the speed up to 4 because you may have to pour in more plaster or water depending on the composition you're trying to reach and this takes some time. Here I'm trying to get rid of the big chumps of material so that we have a smooth paste to work with. Just a little bit more water and we have now achieved the composition that we wanted. This would be melted ice cream. Like really melted ice cream. Here is our mold again. Believe it or not, this is just a top of something that the delivery man brought us to eat. And it is a bit flimsy. This is why I'm going to be directly supporting it with the pre-cut acrylic more to that later and getting ready to pour it in nice and slowly seems like not all chumps have been eliminated but it's going to work out Now I'm shaking it a bit in order to get rid of the air bubbles and get the material evenly distributed. And you notice that I leave something in here for later which we are going to return in a future video. After letting it dry for about half an hour to an hour. This is what you're going to be looking at. But now the question rises, how do we get it out of here? And for this, I start pulling the leads outwards. Not downwards, but outwards. And I aim here to let some air in in order to be able to get it out easier later. So I'm doing this all around until the air gets inside. See that bubble? Now you can gently push it out. And now you have your mold, but it's still wet inside. We want to get rid of all that humidity, right? So, there is something that we've got to do about it. Almost perfect, a little bubble here, but we'll live with it. Now, for this step, you'll have to let the plaster dry out for a couple of weeks at least. That's if you don't follow my method. which takes us to the kitchen because we're going to bake the plaster in order to speed up the whole procedure and we're going to do this from both sides at a temperature 
of 130 degrees Celsius for me, by the way. I live in Europe, Austria. Open it up and place our mold inside, like this. Looking good, right? Now we just have to close it up and wait patiently for 10 hours. And done! As you can see, our plaster is now considerably lighter since it is now completely dry. Now we've mixed it, we've baked it, and now it's ready to be further processed with our pencil. We're now going to draw the tunnels. But before do we do this, let me get a quick explanation to you about this little acrylic. I have cut it by just drawing a square, then using the iron saw to get that square out of the bigger piece and then smoothening it out with sandpaper. And our final trusty tool is a Dremel, model 2050. This is a rather small one perfectly usable for things like this and I have of course a set of bits for any situation I may encounter. Like everything else I will link you this down in the description so you can directly purchase it. Here I have already begun drawing. It's a good idea to start off with the entrance and then make up the tunnels. I personally make everything out of my mind, so bear with me here. Want to give the ants a few main chambers to live in. And finally, we shouldn't be forgetting the watering area. This is what this is. And we've got to add a bit of plaster around it. So that the ants cannot get out. And the drawing phase is now complete. Now, let us get into carving. Using the Dremel, but not with the bit you see, we're going to switch that out for one which allows for more precision. See this one with a little spike? This is going to allow us to outline the chambers better. Turning it on, adjusting the speed, and getting ready for impact. <laughs> no guys, just joking. But make sure to hold it tightly, because it can't spin out of control if you fail to. slowly carving things out. As you can see from all the particles flying around, this is the very reason I use my glasses and mask, because I don't want to inhale this or get it into my eyes. And you shouldn't as well. It's not good for your health. Just making a little stop here for you guys who don't have a Dremel, you can also do that with this chisel I got here. 
and you just do it by applying some pressure with precision. Let me get a bit closer. You apply pressure and tilt it a bit until the surface goes off and you repeat doing that going deeper and deeper until the chamber is formed the way you want it and it's going to be a bit edgy so you can smooth it out with some sandpaper I do that anyway but I think with the chisel it's a must let us continue with the Dremel because I've adjusted myself to that been using it a lot here I continue outlining the tunnels and the chambers using a brush to remove excess material and see where I'm at just nice and steady guys this is like drawing but you have to hold it tightly if you don't it's going to spin out of control and in the best case it's going to ruin your design and in the worst case you're going to get yourself injured with it So brushing everything off and this is the point where we stand. I've done a main outlining of the chambers and I'm now switching to another bit which let me show you it's a circular one and this is going to allow us to shape the tunnels and the chambers better give them more depth while also letting them look smoother. See? With this bit we're now removing a lot more material which comes as a double-edged edged sword cause you have to be a lot more precise with it than with a smaller one of course but I think I'm up to the task so I continue going for it the chambers are getting form as we're going adding some depth and also extending a bit the last chamber of the setup both in width and depth the last detail is of course the hole where we are going to place the sponge for watering That should do it. Now let's brush everything up and see how it looks. There you go. Pretty good, but these chambers are still a bit too edgy for my style. So we are going to further process it. And I'll be doing this with the pencil and the sandpaper. We're going to combine those. Let me just cut it off here. We're going to wrap the sandpaper around the pencil. And this will allow us 
to add more pressure when we are working. Let me get that right and start rubbing. You see that it already got smoother if you compare the upper chamber to the one on the bottom. If you want to do something more detailed you'll have to switch to sandpaper alone. The reason I'm doing this is because I need it to be narrower. If I were using the pencil with this little tunnel here, it would be too wide. And this is how far I've come off camera with smoothening everything out. It finally looks good in the inside, but we still have this edgy material standing out because we have used too much of the mixture. We've put too much of the mixture into our mold and I'm using sandpaper to smooth it out. You could theoretically break these lids off, but you would risk to make a few holes in your setup. I like things pretty, so patience is key. We're slowly getting it into shape. So I'm using a smaller piece of sandpaper here for the finishing details. And as you can see, it's already looking pretty good. Brush off the dust and voila. Next up, we want of course to connect our nest to an outward or to another nest. So we'll be using a piece of tubing here. Mine is 8 and 11 millimeters. I've pre-cut this piece and we'll try opening an entrance to fit it in. For this I'm using the Dremel again, but this time I'm switching to another bit. This is a drilling bit for it, which will allow us to carve out the entrance and go deeper. Ready to go. For drilling, I want the nest to be more stable, so I put it on the table and hold it. While going in slowly. As you can see, I'm going in and out to allow the dust particles to get out of there so I can reach deeper inside. And of course, because our tubing is way wider than that, I'm performing circular movements to widen the hole. Now, let's let us speed up a bit here. We of course have to work our way to the entrance from the inside, 
So these two holes should ideally meet each other. Otherwise, the ants won't be able to get in or out, guys. We've got to get that much right. And as you can see, this is quite the process. And being quite the process, even at high speed, I'm using some drill bits here by hand to be more precise to open the holes wider and like I was saying guys this is going to be a long video and many of you requested longer videos this is the first thing to keep in mind and the other thing to keep in mind is that I get a lot of questions from you guys on a very detailed level so I thought by providing a detailed video that these questions would be answered right out of the back. Here I'm using the chisel in a circular movement to open the hole further in order for it to be able to fit the 8 by 11 millimeter tubing that I'm using. So let me know if you like this longer video because if you do I'll make sure I make more. Now, for those of you who don't want to paint their creation, you're almost done. You just have to drill the hole in order to be able to water the sponge later. So for this, let me get my drill. And for making holes in acrylic, this set has proved very useful to me. These are step drill bits from Tuck Life. I will link you the exact product in the description so you can get them. Now we start drilling. Make sure to do it slowly because acrylic is a very sensible material and hole is done. Now to finish this off you would have to seal it off with silicone or with blue tack around so that no ants can escape. But I am going to paint it. So here's my brush and my color. I've decided to make the inside brown natural, like the earth. Going at it. In case you're wondering, this is acrylic, non-toxic paint. If you're looking for it, just have a look down in the description. Notice that I am only painting the top and not the chambers. Because if we paint the chambers, let's say the ants wouldn't be able to get to the water as easy. Because the water wouldn't be getting through as easy to the material if it's painted. Here I show you how go into these corners, keep it nice and steady. I'm a little perfectionist, so everything has to be perfect. And now that the inside is done, we're going to be painting the outside with some green color and a bigger brush. Let's get into it again with some super speed. Do this all around. You may have to do this multiple times because the plaster material 
actually absorbs the paint a lot faster than materials like Utong do, which I'm also working with a lot, if you have seen any of my other build tutorials. And now we'll toss it over so that we can finish the sides of the nest and the bottom. Painting the bottom keeps the humidity inside for longer, so you won't have to water your ants as frequently as if you don't paint it. One last thing we have to do is to cut a piece of sponge down to size to fit and here we go guys, done. And let me show you another light. Do you like it? I know you guys are here for this beauty. You've seen in the thumbnail. I've actually been producing this in parallel with the other, but it has a main design difference in that it has two holes and in one of them I will put a magnet. This is a strong magnet and I will fix it down there with some aquarium silicone so that it keeps the acrylic plate on top in place without blue tack or silicone needed. Here I'm drawing the hole I need to make for the sponge. I always do that last. And let me get you this beauty in the right light too. Look at the details. What do you think? Which one do you like most? Is it the natural green one or the deep sea yin yang blue. Let me know by voting right now in the corner. I'm very interested in your opinion guys. Be kind enough to hit that like button if you want to see more unfarmed build videos and keep your eyes peeled for the 1000 sub special or just subscribe with a bell icon set to all notifications and you won't miss it. So, what do you think guys? Was it worth after all the effort? Let me know down in the comments below. I wish you all a successful queen catching season and I'll see you in the next one. Bye everyone.